Hello guys, this is Mike from programming.org. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about ints, but I'm not going to code them just yet because ints, there are quite a few different types. We have uh, unsigned and signed, which we're, I'm going to actually talk about in this tutorial, and then we have shorts, longs, and just regular ints. So, if you decide to add two ints, and each one of them is a valid int because it's within the correct uh, size, but together they're bigger than what an, that particular int can hold, you're going to not get the correct answer. You're going to get some funky number. And the reason is, is what I'm going to explain here, the, the, everything that happens in the background behind the variables. Well, the computer is broken down into zeros and ones, and a zero or one, which is the two types of values you can have, for a bit, not two types of values, the only two values you can have for a bit is a zero or a one, and a byte is eight bits together. So if you look at this, I have zero, one, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero. And sometimes to make something more readable, you might want to put a little space or, or you know, something in between uh, four uh, bits. So what we're going to do is talk about what do these numbers represent? Well, if you have eight bits or one byte, the number, well, I'll get to that, the highest number you can get to in a minute. Well, let's take this first value right here. We're going to start at zero and we're going to say two to the zero power times the value up here. So there's two possible values for this first location and it's zero or one. So if we had one bit, the only value it can represent is actually a zero or one. So if it's zero, we're going to say it's zero times two to the negative or two to the zero power, which would be zero. But since we have a one here, we're going to say one times two to the zero power and two to the zero power is one. So we're going to have a one there. And, and you're going to follow this pattern all the way through. So the next value will be two to the first power then 2 to the 2nd, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 4th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 6th, and 2 to the 7th. And also notice uh, the, the first number on this line is the 0 or the 1 that is in the, um, the byte. And the second number is going to be this 2 to whatever power. So notice that each time it uh, going this way, it doubles. Starting at 1, then 2 to the 1st power is 2. 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8. So every time we add one bit, we double the amount of integer possible integer values we can store. Okay, so this this example right here that I wrote, um, we we did the multiplications and we then we have to add all of the answered multiplications down here. So we had 64 we had the 32, we had a 16, a 4, a 2, and a 1, and that ended up being 119. So as far as, um, well, I guess it doesn't matter because of this bit right here is, is a 0. So in unsigned and signed, this would still be the same value. But it could possibly be, if we had all 1s, we would get 255. And if we had all zeros, we would get zero. So our range is zero to 255, which is 256 possible numbers, because if you start counting at zero instead of one, that means altogether we have 256. And that actually is two to the eighth power. So two, if you have a one here and all the rest are zeros, you're just going to have 128. But altogether, if they're all ones, that's equivalent to 2 to the 8th power of possible uh, integer values. Now, this is a great way of keeping track of uh, the range that we can do, but what, is, what about negative numbers? Well, we can take the most significant digit right here, this first one, and we can make it a 1, and that would mean um, that it's negative, and 0 would be uh, positive, but then that means we can only add two, to, starting right here, and all of these together. So that cut. Notice that it cuts in half each time the the available um, values. So once we go down one power, we cut the numbers in half. But with this 
most significant digit, we can say one, and that signifies to the machine that the number is negative. So instead of zero to 255, we're still gonna have 256 possible numbers, but now we have negative 128, and that ranges to 127, okay? And if you count each one of those values, this isn't a negative, this, let's just say, ranges to one, I don't know. Well, so if you count it from negative 128 and you counted every value all the way to 127, you're gonna get 256 values. And you may ask why 127, and that's because negative 128 to negative one is 128, and then zero to 127 is 128. So 128 plus 128 is 256. Okay, so that is how we deal with signed and unsigned. So if we have unsigned, we're going to be able to do double the amount of values as we have signed, but the, you know, what, what's the point of not having signed? The only way we would have that is if we were counting something and we knew we were never going to be in the negatives, such as how many uh, cars do I own? I don't own negative cars, so it would be just best to do unsigned, but by default, int in the C++ language is signed, all right? And now let me tell you the ranges for shorts and longs and regular ints. So the range of a short is going to be two, and we're gonna raise that to the 16th power. So it's just double, um, the amount of bits that we have in, done in this example right here, but two to the 16th isn't double 256. What it is, is actually it goes up to 65,535. So 65,500, it's actually 536, but it ranges from zero, say zero to 6,000 or 65,000. 535 okay so total you got 65,536 possible spots and that is for unsigned so when you go to signed we are going to get come on we are going to get negative 32,768 to 32,000 767 okay so that's the unsigned I'll just put that right here or that's the sign sorry signed and this is unsigned and remember signed is always the default one so let's say this is short int now let's go to long int which is two to the 32nd power okay so in this case it's actually zero to a pretty big number it's four billion it's four billion two hundred ninety four thousand nine hundred and sixty seven thousand or yeah nine hundred sixty seven thousand and two hundred ninety five so I said that wrong. So it's 4,294,967,295. And the signed version is going to be a big number. Negative, I'm just going to do a rough estimate, but negative 2, I'll just write it out. Negative 2,147,458,000. Six hundred and forty-eight, six hundred and forty-eight to two million one hundred and forty-seven million four hundred eighty-three thousand six hundred and forty-seven. Okay, and that is signed. And this is there we go unsigned. All right, and we also have something what's called a long long and that is 2 to the 64 let's see where's the 2 to the 64 and it's a very very big number um, I'm not going to write it out right now 
but you can do the math if you want to. And so by default, this is the default int. If you just press int, this is the um, range that you're working with. So if we go and we have two million, and then we add, we try to add, or two billion, and try to add two hundred million to it, we're not going to get the correct answer because it's outside of this int range unless we stored it as a long, long. Okay, so that is the problem with this. I'm going to actually write a program real quick and I'm going to do that so you can see that it will hold up to that value and down to this value but it can't hold anything more than that. So I wrote this right here x equals uh, 2 billion and y equals 2 billion and that should equal 4 billion, right? So if we go back to our sheet we can only hold up to 2 billion and 147 million etc. So let's run that code real quick and see what happens. Okay, so look, we got a negative number, so that's kind of strange if you are thinking that computers know everything. They don't. They just do what you're told, and this is the back, what's happening in the background, um, and that's how numbers are stored. By default, they're signed, but if you wanted to declare something unsigned, that's all you have to do is just say unsigned int, for example, or unsigned long int, which is the same thing. So that is the difference. The only time you really want to use unsigned if you know for sure that the numbers you're dealing with will never go below zero. Other than that, uh, and if you do that, know that uh, the possible values you can store in that unsigned int double so that is the advantage of using unsigned but by default we're just going to usually talk about just ints in this thing but this is a good background to know so thank you all for watching and in the next tutorial I'll actually start coding with ints and shorts and longs